I'm Jason, your perfect air tech support. I'm here today to talk to you about the proper installation of a ductless mini split. Please follow these steps as it will help you have a successful installation and your equipment will last a very long time. When you get your new condenser and take the box off, you will see a yellow sheet taped to the top of the condenser. Please take the time to read this sheet. It is very important and this will assist in making your mini split run for a very long time. A surge protector is highly recommended to prevent damage to the equipment due to electrical failures. Mini splits use DC inverter technology which require expensive circuit boards. Don't let power surges over and under voltage or brownouts ruin your expensive HVAC equipment. Install a surge protector to keep your equipment protected. Never use wire nuts on the communication cable. Crimp type connectors are allowed. Using wire nuts on any communication cable will eventually result in losing conductivity. You will have problems down the road. Only use butt or crimp type connectors for all wiring. Wiring between the indoor and outdoor unit is polarity sensitive. Example, if the indoor unit is wired black on one, red on two, and white on three, it needs to be the same on the outdoor unit. This will give you an E1 error code every time. The wires must be matched accordingly. A minimum of 16 gauge stranded, four wire FT4 rated, 300 volt wire is needed. You do not want to use solid core wire on any mini split. The board will not supply the correct voltage and the unit will not work properly. Be sure to make all flares with an approved 410A flaring tool. R22 flares are different than R410A flares. This is an important step to be followed. You will end up with leaky flares and going back to the job if they are not correct. A minimum of 10 foot line set is required. To prevent hearing vibration noise from the outdoor condenser and to keep the unit from being overcharged, a 10 foot minimum line set is required. On a single zone, if a line set is longer than 25 feet, you will need to weigh in the specified amount of refrigerant. See the installation and the operation manual for that amount. These systems are charge critical. Your perfect air condenser comes pre-charged with enough gas for a line set length of 25 feet. Use your manual to get the suggested ounces per foot for additional refrigerant over 25 feet and weigh it in. On multi-zone, there is enough refrigerant for 25 feet of line set. Example, a three-zone system has 75 foot of line set in the system. Follow the installation manual if you need to add refrigerant. Use oil or nylon on the threads and torque nuts to the proper specified value. See installation and operation manual for those values. Very important step. If you over under tighten the nut, you will have a leak guaranteed. Always use the suction gas line to add or remove refrigerant. Some units come with service ports on each valve. You always want to take all pressure readings and add or subtract oil through the suction or gas line. Test for leaks by pressurizing the system with a minimum of 350 pounds of nitrogen and hold for at least 60 minutes. R410A is a high pressure system and it should be tested for leaks that way. This step is lengthy but worth it. No leaks means no callbacks. Evacuate the system down to a minimum of 500 microns. Use a micron gauge to evacuate the system down to 500 microns or better. Any moisture in the system, the refrigerant will turn into an acid and ruin your system from the inside out. For a successful installation and to get the most out of your equipment, please follow these steps. These are very important steps and they will guarantee your system will last as long as it possibly can.